What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlogs. This video might be a pretty quick one, but I just want to share and have you guys be on the lookout should you guys be looking to buy a 2023 or 2024 Bronco. I just want to share some of the things I dislike about mine after about 8,000 miles and I guess you could say six months of ownership. If you guys do not know, this is my 2022 Ford Bronco Outer Banks. It has the Sasquatch package and the hard top on a four door. Now this is Oxford White. I've done some mods here and there, which maybe I'll make a video in the future, but this is, you know, lightly modded so far. My vehicle is about as loaded as you can get, minus the active cruise control, heated steering wheel, and leather seats. Uh, and then obviously with that, it also includes the Bang & Olufsen sound system. Now that's not super impressive, and we'll start off with the first thing on the list because it segues really, really well there. And that is the sound system sucks. It doesn't matter if you upgraded that Bang & Olufsen. When you compare to other vehicles, this sound system sucks. Even if you compare to a Jeep, and I know that's like a bad word to say, but Jeep has a way better sound system, uh, especially on the JL models, than this no matter what. And that's just a thing that I think Ford has always done, um, even back to like the Sony sound systems and stuff like that. If you get an F-250 Platinum, you get an F-150 Raptor, there's always a little bit more to be desired if you're into music, especially if you like bass and that whole sound. Now, if you're just listening to podcasts, you're listening to Joe Rogan, you're listening to whatever, it's perfect. You're gonna have that voice come through crystal clear. You can turn it up nice and loud, but the whole fullness and that punch, it's just not there. And I'm a big music guy. Now, it doesn't mean I always drive around to have everyone else hear my music, but it is something that I like when I'm driving alone or just on a road trip to kind of zen out, listen to some good music and have that. With this sound system, it's really not, not that good. Uh, and I put in the kicker, you know, I put in that amplifier, I'll have a link to that video down below, and it helped a lot, but it still needs upgraded speakers and it needs a subwoofer. I know the Bang & Olufsen system comes with the eight inch subwoofer, but again, it's just not that good. I'm waiting on the JL Audio Stealth Box, which should be coming out pretty soon, and you bet that'll be on the channel, so stay tuned for that and subscribe if you're interested into that. Next thing I do wanna get into, and keep in mind, my vehicle is used, so it's all nice and dirty here. Um, I use the crap out of this thing, by the way. Like this is not a pavement princess at all. I have skid plates and it's been used off road quite a bit. Um, but this thing, when you're off road and you need a little fresh air on a cold day like today, right? You've got those nice heated seats going, but you need to roll down the window, get some fresh air. If you roll down the window to about, you know, I don't know, eighth of it, or maybe even a quarter, you're gonna get a nasty, nasty window rattle over some bumps. It just sounds like your whole window is rattling apart. And to get a little, I guess you could get a little preview of that, is when you open and close the door, it's like it's loose, but it's not, you know? It, it's in there tight. Listen to this, this just sounds so cheap to me, and this is one of the things I dislike. You guys see that rattle when I opened it? Look at that, that is just so loose to me. And the rear, I think, doesn't do it nearly as bad. Yeah, the rear is nice and solid. So it's just the front window thing. And again, it only happens if you have it, you know, down to about here, because I like to crack the window. But if you go about halfway, it does not do it because it makes it more solid. So I know that this is something that is kind of small and stupid, uh, but that really annoys the crap out of me because sometimes you just want that fresh air. Something else while I have the window open here is just this does not have a rain gutter. So on a Jeep JL, which is of course its closest competitor, I'm comparing it against that, but this does not have a rain gutter. So when you open up these frameless doors, again, love that Ford did that, makes it really small when you wanna take the doors off. However, when you open them up or you crack the window and you take a turn, all of this rain and water that's sitting on top is coming right into your window. Again, not that big of a deal. It's all hard plastic, you just wipe it down. But if you're dressed up and trying to go somewhere, then of course that's gonna suck. So that's just one of the things that I've noticed. It is a little bit different because it's basically me sitting here complaining about my vehicle. And let me just pause for a second and say, I'm very grateful for this and being in a position to be able to have this and share it with you guys. Um, without your guys' help, you know, this would be a lot harder. So I really appreciate you guys watching the videos and being subscribed and being so interactive. But again, I am just trying to make this video to showcase some of the realist points of owning a new vehicle. You know, and these are small things that, you know, when I bought mine, we were under COVID, we were under lockdowns and they had uh, huge manufacturing issues and supply chain issues. So for them to knock this out and I got a pretty quick turnaround on mine, I give Ford a lot of props. But of course that comes with, you know, we might be a little rushed in some sections, 
and that's fine. We can come back and fix those things at the dealership. That's why three year, 36,000 mile warranty comes standard on cars. So again, I just wanna make a point that I'm not sitting here complaining and you know saying, oh, my life sucks because of these stupid little things. I'm just pointing out those things that are kind of irritating that you found by just owning a vehicle over the years. And this I'm sure you guys can all relate to. It's on every type of vehicle. There is no perfect vehicle as much as we like to tell ourselves as car guys and car girls, but there's always something that we'd love to improve, right? That's why we modify things. Coming around back, I have mine on 37 inch KM3s from BF Goodrich. Uh, and I also have real beadlocks from Black Rhino. I have a video, you can do all of that yourself other than you know balancing them unless you have a balancing machine. But I had all that done by myself. Um, we had them put on. But one of the things I dislike, and I get why Ford did it, it's probably a cost saver, but unless you have the Badlands Edition, you do not get a metal bumper. So with this, you can see, you know, I do use mine. It's got some dings and scratches from all the camping gear. You know, it's 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 used. Uh, I have some stuff all around. You can see my dust from off-roading, uh, the dog bed. But one of the things I dislike here is the plastic bumper and it's not a spot where you can step on. So this right here is so shallow and it's still angled. I get it for water, but it does not allow you to step. What you're getting here is you're just getting plastic on the bumper unless you get the Badlands. And when you get the Badlands, you get a full metal bumper and I believe you also get built in flares, whereas mine are just screwed in. So with that, you get a little bit of an upgrade. Now, it doesn't mean this is the, the worst thing in the world. It just means over time, you're going to probably want to upgrade this if you drag it and go off-roading and things like that. Plus, you can look and find a really, really nice one that's aftermarket, that's a little bit more aggressive. It's got light spots. You could do all that stuff um, as you basically get to you know, customize and make it how you want. The one that might just seem a little dumb is going to be my door fitment. Now, it's hard to put this on video, but this door sticks out. It doesn't seem like a lot, but the first time it, you know, I really noticed it, it looked like my door was a little open. Like that right there, you can see the alignment is a little off. Again, it's not the end of the world. The, the doors come on and off. I'm sure it's like an alignment pin or something. But for me, it just looked like I had my door, you know, not aligned properly. And it's just on that bottom edge. So I, I think I could probably adjust this myself. You can see the gap just gets a little bit bigger in here. But again, this is the small things that maybe they rushed or maybe they just tried to get it out before the weekend. And that's what I have. So this is totally refixable once we get to, uh, you know, the dealership and have a, a few things fixed. But that's just one of those things that when you buy a newer vehicle and they're trying to get them out quickly because there's a huge wait list, you might find things like that. Being realistic here, their expectations are you have a removable roof, a removable top, uh, the doors are removable. Literally, this thing is meant to be almost like an off-road go-kart. And the fact that it's street legal, it could still be somewhat quiet, somewhat you know, soundproof and things like that and comfortable. That's what really makes the Bronco a very unique vehicle. But one of the things that Ashley, my girlfriend and I always do is take off these front two panels. Now, when you take off these two panels, it's really simple, it takes a few minutes, but you're gonna notice this. And this is something that I thought was maybe just a summertime issue, but as you can see, it's nice and cold and it's still an issue. When you take off these panels, sometimes about right here, there's this like black gooey glue and it's, it's pretty on there. Now it comes off, don't worry. And also this is PPF, so it's got ceramic coating. But when you take off the panel, it's kind of like this stringy black glue. It's almost like you have a mozzarella cheese stick. And with that, it just leaves this mess. Now, it, it happens whenever you're taking off the panel, and again, it's all removable. I just need some detail spray and a microfiber, um, but just know it does happen, and it happens on both sides. So I'll probably bring that up to the dealer when I go ahead and take it in, you know, get all this stuff serviced. But yeah, it does happen on both sides. You can see it a little bit lighter here. I might've rubbed it off a bit, but yeah, it does come off. Again, this is PPF, so it's not too big of a deal, but it's just kind of annoying. And the first time it happened, uh, I thought, you know, this thing's gonna fall apart or something like that, but it seems to be pretty normal. Um, and I'm just hoping that, you know, four or five years from now, I don't have a leak or something like it's missing some of that glue. That's pretty much it, you guys. I really do enjoy the Bronco. I have a few parts waiting to go on. It's just so cold. I don't really wanna do them right now, but we have a roof rack that'll be going on. And again, we'll have the rooftop tent soon. This is gonna be an off-roading overland rig. Uh, we also have exhaust that's going on there. So I'm gonna be making that video and showcasing you guys the before and after of the exhaust. We have the 2.7, I forgot to mention that, but we do have the 2.7 V6, 10-speed auto, 
And yeah, overall, I've been really, really enjoying the vehicle. I just have a few little gripes, which I'm sure we all have with all of our vehicles. But yeah, I just wanted to share that and get this video out for you guys. Should you guys be looking into buying or ordering a new Ford Bronco? So that's gonna pretty much wrap up this video. I don't wanna keep going on and on and just nitpicking small things, but these are the things that were at least noticed by Ashley and I by driving it over the last six months. And I have a question, if you own a Bronco, do you also have some of these things? If so, what have you fixed or how have you fixed it? Have you just gone through the dealer or are you more hands-on and wanna try it yourself? The biggest thing for me, I guess, would just be like that glue that's always coming out. Um, I hate that because I always have to clean it and it just looks like black tar snot on the A-pillar. But again, if it's just normal and it's something I deal with because it's how the Bronco is, I'll handle that and I'll just take it on the chin. But that's gonna wrap up this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.